Welcome to the Bel Airs Research Institute, located on the Caribbean island of Barbados. It was founded in 1954 as a field station for McGill University. Bel Airs is Canada's only teaching and research facility in the tropics. It is located in Holtown on the west coast of the island, steps away from the beach. Bel Airs runs numerous university field courses and workshops throughout the year, including the Barbados Field Study Semester and the Barbados Interdisciplinary Tropical Studies Program. The current establishment consists of four main buildings containing classrooms, conference rooms, lab space, and living accommodation. About 40 visitors can be accommodated at one time, and meals are served on request. The idea behind the Bel Airs SPF Greenhouse Project is to enhance the sustainable food production on the Bel Airs campus to help provide fresh, healthy, and local produce to the kitchens on site. The greenhouse was designed and built using the expertise of Lucas McCartney, a PhD candidate focusing on tropical greenhouse design in the Department of Bioresource Engineering at McGill University. The project was made possible through funding from the McGill Office of Sustainability in collaboration with Dr. Mark Lefstrud, Associate Professor in the Department of Bioresource Engineering, and Susan Mahone, Director at the Bel Airs Research Institute. Some may wonder why greenhouses may be necessary in warm regions like the Caribbean. Carmen Rafa and Brittany Curry Sharples, students in the Barbados Interdisciplinary Program, shed some light on this topic. Barbados is a SIDS country, a small island developing state. It means they can't take advantage of economies of scale just because um, they're not large enough, production isn't large enough. Um, also there's seasonality problems, there's not distinct seasons which means that um, a lot of pests and diseases they're around all the time here which means that growth can be really hard. Uh, the other thing is a loss of arable land and what arable land there is is being converted into um, a lot of tourism. So they're losing agricultural land that could be used for productive reasons um, and it just means that they end up having to import so their food bills are quite high and so that's where the greenhouse comes in is trying to increase uh, local production and consumption. A greenhouse is a form of protected agriculture that produces a controlled environment for plants to grow and thrive in. It protects plants against rain, pests, diseases and many other threats but one of its main features is turning light into heat. This conversion takes place when sunlight enters through the roof and walls of a greenhouse. Part of this light is absorbed by the soil and plants. Part of this light is reflected off of the greenhouse walls and roof as infrared radiation, trapping the energy inside the greenhouse. And part of this infrared radiation escapes the greenhouse. The net effect is that the temperature inside the greenhouse rises. In temperate regions, greenhouses are used to prolong the growing season. However, in the tropics, where there is more solar radiation than in temperate zones, the greenhouse effect can cause the temperature to rise too high to a point where the high temperature is detrimental to the plants. PhD candidate and our mentor, Lucas McCartney, along with his supervisor, Dr. Lepstrud, are currently developing technology called a naturally ventilated augmented cooling greenhouse, or NVAC greenhouse, to remedy this issue of temperatures rising too high in tropical greenhouses. The greenhouse was built over the course of three semesters, starting in the summer of 2015 with the first group of students. The goals for this first stage were to build the foundation, frame, roof, and floor. The team consisted of Brittany, Carmen, and Dom, who were amazing help in this first phase of the project. A small lot in the front yard of Bel Airs was selected as the site for the greenhouse. The very first steps of the construction began in May 2015. The project was an opportunity for McGill students to learn about local agriculture, plant science, horticulture, construction, and teamwork. Two student groups from the BITS programs took part in the project and helped build this now fully functional greenhouse. Barbados is the easternmost island in the Lesser Antilles and is not in the principal hurricane strike zone. The island, however, does experience occasional tropical storms. The proximity of Bel Airs to the ocean makes for very sandy soils, so a concrete foundation was poured to ensure structural strength. Many other students taking part in the programs participated when we undertook big tasks. It was critical to get the foundation square, level, and plumb. We used leftover concrete to leave a small SPF monument at the entrance of the greenhouse.
One of the requirements for a sustainable and affordable greenhouse in the Caribbean is accessibility to common materials. The greenhouse was built from galvanized steel of various profiles that are easy to work with and easily found in abundance on the island. Moreover, in order to follow the project rationale, that is to keep the build simple, using local and accessible tools and within a respectable budget, the method of fabrication needed to remain simple. The design work was a fun challenge, but unfortunately for Brittany, Carmen and Don, this meant lots and lots of cutting and drilling. This segment illustrates the method by which the roof structural members were bent. This step in the build is usually the more complex part, requiring expensive machines to smoothly bend the metal. To solve this, a jig was built and anchored to the ground in an open space, in this case in the parking lot near the greenhouse construction site. A first set of template roof members is carefully created on which the team relies to make all other parts. The metal tubing was measured and cut to the required lengths before using the jig. The bending of the tubes isn't easy at first, but with practice it becomes somewhat of an art. The process is repeated as many times as necessary to produce a series of identical parts. Everyone in the team took part in this step, as a learning process and because lots of roof parts needed to be made. Once all the parts were fabricated, the installation began. The roof parts were installed using U-bolts and conventional nuts and bolts to attach the parts to the frame. This process was challenging as it involved work high up on the frame of the greenhouse. We got creative during the process in order to finish the job. The final phase of the build was to have the floor of the greenhouse installed. We ordered a huge pile of crushed coral which would become the floor. A man named Selwyn was hired to dig one foot deep in the interior and one foot outside of the perimeter of the greenhouse. Selwyn then filled the hole with the crushed coral and piled it six inches above ground level. The last step was to compact the crushed coral and the floor of the greenhouse was completed. Lucas returned to the island in the fall of 2015 to finish up the work for that year in order to be ready for the team of students arriving in the summer of 2016. The gutters and insect netting were installed. Phase one of the project was complete. Summer 2016 was right around the corner. The plan for the second phase of the construction was to cover the roof, install the misting system, set up the rainwater harvesting system and growing systems, and finally put in the first plants. Jessica, Rachel, and Reese were a fantastic team to help finish up the build. Polyethylene sheeting is commonly used for greenhouse roof covering, as it is readily available almost anywhere in the world. The challenge with it is that it can be easily punctured or torn during the installation process. We installed scaffolding inside the greenhouse to help with this process. Once the scaffolding was up and finishing touches to the roof structure were complete, we were ready to put the sheeting onto the roof frame. It is easiest to install greenhouse polyethylene sheeting on calm days with no wind. 
In our case, this was on a really rainy day. This was probably the only day any one of us got cold while in Barbados. Eventually, the greenhouse was fully covered, so we took cover from the rain, and the skies cleared revealing the now fully built greenhouse. Now that the structure was fully complete, the plumbing and electrical work needed to be done. The greenhouse was designed and built to collect any water that falls onto its roof. To supplement this, we tied into the existing rainwater harvesting on the nearby Brace building at Belairs, which has a significantly larger roof. This ensures sufficient supply of fresh water to the greenhouse. In order to run the pumps in the greenhouse, for both the misting system and the irrigation system, an electrical line was installed through the yard and the appropriate components were installed in the greenhouse. A control system was mounted to switch the irrigation on and off according to a schedule that can be programmed. The system also controls the misting line to switch it on and off according to a schedule and according to immediate weather conditions. With the infrastructure in place, we moved into setting up the drip irrigation system. A drip irrigation system uses emitters to control the flow of nutrient solution to the plants. The plants are grown in a coconut core substrate grow bag. These bags can be reused many times, provided root diseases are avoided from one crop to another. With the growing system all set, the first seeds were germinated. We did some research and some shopping around to find locally available high quality seeds. Some greenhouse crop varieties have been bred to perform well in suboptimal conditions, in this case, in hot conditions. The tiny, newly germinated plants are grown for a few days in a protected area, such as in a lab or a classroom. Once the first few leaves start growing on these small plants, they can be placed in the coconut core bags in the greenhouse, where they rapidly start growing. The following section shows the hardware involved in a greenhouse irrigation system. A set of pumps, filters, and reservoirs are used to ensure proper irrigation of the plants. plant nutrient solution needs to be mixed into the 200 gallon water reservoir that is inside the greenhouse. The solution can be made from various pre-made mixes or mixed by hand to the grower's preferences. Throughout the crop's life in the greenhouse, maintenance needs to be regular to ensure good yield. Different types of pests are always a threat to greenhouse crops. Insects like caterpillars or whiteflies can rapidly damage a crop. Diseases of many types can also ravage a crop. Proper crop choice, good practices, and maintenance are required to ensure success of the crops. Although a very safe nation in the Caribbean, some theft does occur and extra precaution was taken to secure the greenhouse. A strong metal fence was installed around the walls of the greenhouse to safeguard the equipment and the crop. An underground reservoir was designed to accommodate the roof rainwater and to also collect any unused irrigation water. A pump in the reservoir regularly pumps the water back into the tank within the greenhouse to help conserve water. This way, very little water is ever wasted. A reflective overhead netting called Illuminate was installed to help reduce the solar radiation reaching the crop. This netting can be adjusted according to the time of year and the crop being grown. Reducing the solar load reaching the growing area and reaching the plants is an easy way to help mitigate high temperatures in greenhouses in the tropics. Dr. Mark Lefsred explains some of the details behind this greenhouse design and speaks about the project. I've been thinking about the idea of using um, natural convection as a means to allow airflow within greenhouses actually since my master's degree. But I was the, the, the clincher for it was I went and did a tour down in Trinidad and Tobago and looking at their greenhouses and they weren't growing overly well and their biggest problem was is they were trying to use fans so I thought well how about I resurrect this idea that I've been thinking about for 
eight years at that point. So, so that's how we started working on it. So what was your initial motivation? You said you noticed in Trinidad that there wasn't, their so, plants weren't growing yeah, well? Yeah, so one of the big challenges that we have is that plants grow in, most greenhouses and most plants that we grow are temperate plants. And so we actually design greenhouses for that purpose, which means that if we have our standard greenhouse, it has solid walls on the side and you make it so it's a wind tunnel, so air blows from one end of the building to the other. In the tropics, it just gets too hot, so you'd start at 30 degrees on one end, and by the time you're on the other, you're well over 40 degrees, which would kill most plants. So, but by using fans, it works well in, in Canada or North, North American Europe, because we end up with that temperature gradient. We might get 30 degrees, but it only happens for a few days, and usually at nighttime, it's cold enough, we can bring the temperature down. So, the tropical greenhouse has a, a, a sawtooth ridge on the top, so it allows the air to flow up through that roof ridge. Um, the problem is that if I put fans on that, I either have to have them up at the very top sucking the air out or I put them on the bottom trying to blow, but then because there's meshing on the sidewall, it just keeps missing and so you don't get a proper convection system. So the idea would be that we could get a, by having that roof system, you could actually have air starting to circulate as a loop inside of it instead of just always going in one direction. An NVAC greenhouse is a new greenhouse design that is patented by Dr. Mark Lestrid and Lucas McCartney. As in any other greenhouse design, pumps are used to supply irrigation water to the plants. In this design, a third small pump is used to pressurize water and send it to the rafters of the greenhouse. A third small roof is installed inside the greenhouse to contain the spray. Air flows in and out from the mesh covered walls and through the top open ridge due to wind and natural convection. With the NVAC design, cooled air from the mist flows down and collapses into the plant area of the greenhouse. This effect, coupled with conventional natural convection, cools the greenhouse and enhances air movement without using fans. With the project now complete, the first plants being grown in the greenhouse are now producing food. Peppers, tomatoes, Swiss chard, and cucumber have been harvested already. project was a great accomplishment and an amazing learning experience for everyone involved. take what you've learned in the classroom and actually do it and to see it happen in real life and to learn that way. Um, so regardless of how much it's producing or um, how much it's reducing food bills at Bel Air's, regardless of whether or not it succeeds in that way, it's still an extremely important tool. Thanks for having a look at the project. Please don't hesitate to contact me or anyone at the SPF office for any questions or comments.